I was playing Ushio Totora, I found myself wondering if the game had been delayed a year or so. This is a fairly complex RPG with unique mechanics, based on a popular property, and here it is on the Famicom in the middle of 1993. It just doesn't make sense. Ushio Totora was a comic about a young man who accidentally releases a demon that was trapped underneath his house. The boy Ushio keeps the spear that had pinned the monster, and its supernatural power prevents the demon Tora from eating him. But Tora's demonic energy draws monsters to the area and causes all sorts of supernatural shenanigans that the two have to team up to deal with. At the time of the game's release, Ushio Totoro was in the middle of a fairly lengthy direct-to-video animated series. This is actually the second game based on Ushio Totora. The first one was an action game on the Super Famicom, which has gained a bit of attention outside of Japan for being one of the better games on the system that didn't get released outside of the country. The plot of the Famicom game Ushio Totora follows the plot of the comic pretty closely. It's actually an episodic RPG, so each chapter essentially adapts one story. In the first chapter, Ushio frees Tora, and then has to defeat an evil statue that was brought to his school. Most of Ushio Totora is played from this overhead view, very similar to other Famicom RPGs. You can hit A to interact with people, or hit B to bring up a menu where you can check out your stats, use items, or save the game to one of the three battery save slots. When you enter some locations, you'll go to this first person view where you hit A to interact with things, and that will let you talk to people or go through doors. These areas are pretty confusing to navigate. The doors don't always link up like you'd expect, and things have a bad tendency to look kind of the same. These first-person scenes are where most of the story takes place, though. Naturally, while you're exploring, you'll get into combat, and the combat system in Ushio Totora is a bit weird. In the first chapter, your party only consists of Ushio and Tora, though in later chapters you'll get additional party members. Everyone has health and will points. Using an attack sucks up some of that will. When you fight, you're given four options. Attack, run away, use an item, or settings. Actually, the name of that last one changes for every character, but it's always the same thing. If you choose to attack, you've got a lot of different abilities available to you. More will show up as you level up. And of course, stronger attacks tend to suck up more will. How do you recover health and will? Well, there's no inns or anything like that for recovering. There are some very rare items that you can use. There's no shops, you have to find them. You can level up, which will restore your health and will. Or you can go to the settings menu. And the settings menu is the most important thing to understand in the game. You can choose to do four things with your attack. A normal attack, a health recovery attack, a will recovery attack, or an all-out attack. Normal is, well, normal. And for the recovery settings, your attacks sacrifice a bit of damage to get that bit of healing. And if you choose all-out attack, you double your will expense, but greatly increase the damage. All of Ushio's attacks just use the spear, while Tora has some physical and magic attacks. Tora's lightning ability can be cast on Ushio, and that will buff his damage to an absolutely absurd degree. The only thing that doesn't take out in one shot is a boss. After some attacks, the spear will act on its own, striking out at every single enemy you're fighting. You don't have any control over when it does that, though. It, it just happens. The dungeon design in Ushio Totoro is a bit weird. It's set up to be about as difficult to map as you can imagine. The multiple layers don't line up quite right, which makes the dungeon loop in a way that you wouldn't expect. It's a strange bit of level design that just serves to make it really hard to navigate. And that's everything there is to playing Ushio Totora. There's no equipment to manage. Like I said, you don't get money from battle, only experience. So there's nothing to do except fight, explore the dungeons, and progress the story. Since your attack and defense is dependent on your level, it is worthwhile to grind, but I really didn't need to do so when I was playing. I did it by accident because I wanted to explore the town while I was constantly being attacked, and it turned out there was nothing there. But I zipped through that first chapter pretty quickly. Ushio Totora doesn't seem to have a lot of fans in Japan. It was hard to find anyone who had something to say about it. It feels like the most anyone could say was, 
that sure is a game. I found Ushio Totora to be interesting, but kinda shallow. Having to rotate the focus of your attacks in order to maintain your energy levels is an interesting concept that I think doesn't really work well in practice. You get low in one area, so you switch over to recovering that, and then sit on that until you're done. Because it's effectively the only way for you to recover your health and spirit, it encourages you to not attempt any big moves. You're going to find yourself slowly whittling down enemies rather than using a full attack. And while you might have multiple attacks, I couldn't really tell the difference between them. It's not like enemies had a weakness that you had to exploit. The presentation looks good at first, and then you have to watch the same slow animations every time. I want to like Ushio Totora better than I do. I like games that try to get creative. But this one winds up feeling kinda meh.